Brutal defense and goaltending absolutely leads to fun hockey, but it doesn't lead to success very often. Avs lose to the New Jersey Devils 7 5. Forgive me if I don't go into excruciating detail on all of these goals, because there were a lot of goals, and you can pretty much blanket all of them with one of the two teams playing terrible defense and having terrible goaltending. It really sums up pretty much the entire game for this one. Certainly for Colorado, their defense was just bad all the way through, and their goaltending was arguably worse. Those two factors combine to put the Avs down three less than 12 minutes into this hockey game. A dumped-in puck from the Devils here rims around the boards and comes to new guy Lars Eller. Now, this is the risk you take when you put a guy who landed 30 minutes ago and knows nothing about the systems in your lineup. Johnson is chilling here, expecting the puck to come directly across to him or maybe rimmed far to Gerard. But Eller just does a little chip dump in towards behind the net, expecting Johnson to be going full steam back there to get it. That is not what happens. Johnson is a little bit slow on his skates as well, so he end up, ends up losing the puck race, and then it's already over. Eller, expecting the system to be something that he doesn't really know, is now out of position, and the puck is coming back to Palat, who has a clear lane all the way to the net. I'm going to give him a total pass here. He literally got to this game 15 minutes before warm-ups. It just is unfortunate that it starts this way. Pretty brutal coverage all the way around. A pass gets through. It doesn't work as it bounces to the corner, but Miko just gets absolutely torched out of this corner entirely here, just as unable to stay with his man at all. And then you get this awkward situation where Bo is kind of floating, worried about the guy up high. You'd like to see Newhook rotate in down low so Bo can be aggressive on the puck carrier. It's hard to do that, though, because you're just expecting Miko to not get this torched. So there's room to work with there. It eventually comes in, starts getting whacked at, and goes in on net to Ananen. You see, the abs are just late to the puck here in every facet. Manson, caught flat-footed, can't affect the rebound. Bo, still not in the play. Nico still not in the play. They just get to this very late, which allows multiple whacks for the Devils at the puck, and it eventually slides across the goal line. All right, let's count the bad here. New Jersey rims a puck, and the Avs are just not even competitive on getting this puck and creating a battle along the wall, whether it be Gerard or Nachushkin. It's just bad. Despite that, not a good play from New Jersey. A bad pass allows the Avs to get possession. This is Nathan McKinnon. This is your best player on the ice and he just turns the thing over in his own zone that is bad number two from here new jersey makes another not good play this is a pass to no one that goes right through sam gerard he's not able to affect the pass and then again the abs simply just lose a foot race to a puck that allows this play to continue final bad you have devon taves sitting in front defending absolutely nothing. So when this pass gets touched across to Tatar, there is no Av within a mile of him, and he gets to shoot into an empty net. The second goal of those three was challenged, but it stood. Don't really have a problem with the call or the attempted challenge from Bednar there. It just didn't go the Av's way. And you just have a brutal game going for Colorado that while they tried valiantly, they just weren't able to dig themselves out of. And you can't blame their stars for this one. It is Nathan McKinnon who gets them on the board at the end of the first period. Nothing super fancy here as the Avs are working in the offensive zone, but they do a good job of working it down to McKinnon initially, and the nice touch pass from McKinnon gets eyes off of him quickly and gets everyone moving away from him. So it's good recognition by Val to go back to McKinnon here, and then McKinnon gets a little bit lucky with this one-timer. It goes off of the leg of McLeod in front and takes a fortunate bounce into the net. So, a McKinnon goal makes it 3-1. Maybe there's a glimmer of hope in this game. And then the second period happens, and the Avs go right back to doing what they were doing, and they give up two more goals. Check it out, it's the Avs defense losing a puck. This time, Devon Taves is the man to turn it over. New Jersey's able to get a weird setup in the offensive zone. Honestly, it looks pretty Avs-esque, as this is a defenseman and Dougie Hamilton cutting down the middle of the ice to create this play, and Andrew Cogliano just gets absolutely worked in the middle of the ice here. And from there, Dougie gets a clear shot, probably still one you wouldn't hate a save, on as Brad Hunt also doing literally nothing net front here also not great but puck ends up in the net either way
This one is at least okay defense initially. The Devils get the zone and the Avs are marking up reasonably well, but as the puck develops into the play, they do let the seam pass through. That's not great, but it's not terrible. They're just going to end up getting a little bit unlucky here. As everyone kind of takes their man, a puck is going to come in deep and bounce off of a skate. It takes a tough bounce for the Avs. Now, I will say Nieto does get a little bit caught in no man's land on this play, but it's not reasonable for him to read a bounce like this to the middle of the ice. So this this one's a little bit of misfortune for Colorado. You need a defensive play or a save. Pick one. You can't go without both for the entire game and expect to win. At that point, it's 5-1. The abs are down four. You can pretty much pack it in. Comebacks like this do happen very occasionally, but at four goal difference, it's really, really rare. And credit to the Avs. They kept themselves in this game. They kept working and they pushed back. Have they gotten really any decent goaltending or defense? There's a good chance they find a way to win this game. The Avs score three unanswered goals of their own over a two-minute stretch in the second period. This time, it's the Avs forecheck, causing a little bit of havoc in the offensive zone. Confer's able to get in, create a mess, and get a turnover for the Avs. Newhook is able to collect and find Josh Manson. Manson has a ton of space to work with here, which he uses well, and recognizes that this dude is the best player on the ice on either team and is wide open in deep. So he sends a feed to Miko Rantanen, and Miko's able to touch it in. Gonna be overlooked in this play, but it's a great job by Bowen Byram on a puck flipped in to knock it down, control it, and put a man behind him, recognizing he has space to skate into. Adding another skater up the ice is always dangerous when you're on the attack. He eventually just gets it to Nathan McKinnon. Nathan McKinnon does Nathan McKinnon things, walks a puck through a guy, and then, admittedly, Vanacek does not do a good job with that shot. Not sure if Anon makes a save initially here or not. He's not currently credited with an assist, but he might get one added a little bit later as that puck comes out and JT Confer is able to jump on it and he just heads up ice. The Devils get caught deep in the zone and it creates a two-on-one situation with Confer and Rantanen. Confer ultimately decides to pull the trigger here and it's a good decision because that is a snipe. So you blink and it's five to four. Your top six forwards have brought you back into this game and made it a contest. If you can find a way to squeak through the rest of this game and not give up another one, the Avs probably have a chance to figure this one out. Unfortunately, you probably didn't need to watch the game to know the Avs defense and goaltending gave up another one. After doing a good job of getting back here, Rantanen is just going to stop moving his feet. He just glides all the way through this defense, doesn't take a single stride, and that's why he gets beat. On top of this, you have Gerard at net front. This is just a bad situation. Whether you like or hate Gerard, he's not good in front of the net. That's just a fact. From here, this pass comes through, and you have more errors on top of this. Anonen is set up to stop this exact pass from coming through. That's the whole point of putting his paddle down like this. He's the one who's supposed to stop this, and it just goes right through him. Gets to the man in front in Mercer, and it's in your net. It's just too many errors. This isn't the Avs getting dominated. This is the Avs presenting roadblocks to themselves, and it was just too much to overcome. And then just simply wasn't good enough in this game, and that's okay. You knew this was an option coming in. You knew it was something that could happen, and it did. That's unfortunate. That's the decision the Avs made, and now they have to live with it. Look, and I'm sure the defense on this one doesn't need a talking to either. They know this was a complete disaster, and they will be better. It's a pretty typical letdown game top to bottom, where the Avs just didn't really have it. The execution was horrible. The decision making was bad. It wasn't for lack of effort. The Avs tried in this game. It shows from their comeback that they just weren't able to complete. They just didn't play well enough. And you're going to have those games along the way. It happened throughout the playoffs in multiple games. The Blues come back in game five of that series. Tampa Bay game three. Bad games happen. You just can't let them roll into something more. Let it be a one-off. Even then, the Avs continued to push. They get a fifth goal early in the third. Something the Avs didn't do enough of in this game. Win puck battles. They win one here in the corner, which allows them to continue possession in the offensive zone. Gerard, looking pass all the way here, finds Lekkanen down in deep. And then the Avs get a little bit lucky. Lekkanen mishandles this. It just bounces right out to Val, who's able to get a stick on this one, and it snaps through the five hole. The Avs never quit in this game. Honestly, their forwards didn't even play that badly. New Jersey kind of played poorly at times, and the Avs took advantage of that. 
the Avs defense and goaltending was just worse. After that fifth goal, you have the backup come in for New Jersey and Akira Schmid, and the Avs do not score another goal again. Not that Schmid played amazing, New Jersey did a good job of shutting the Avs down generally, and the empty netter is what makes it your 7-5 final. This isn't a game against a division rival, this isn't a game where the Avs are giving away two points to a team in the West. Yes, you want them to play better. Absolutely. But if you got to pick a game on the schedule to end up looking like this, it was probably this one. We'll leave it there. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to the dnvr.com for all of our coverage. I am Rudo, and at least it was fun.